It's the 2021 French Grand Prix here at the Castellet, back on the calendar for the first time since 2019. And what a venue it follows as well. After being in Azerbaijan two weeks ago to our third different winner of the year in six races with Sergio Perez, the championship is hotting up. We're heading to our first triple header as well. Next weekend, we move over to Austria. First of all, for the Styrian Grand Prix, a week later will be the Austrian Grand Prix before a week's break for the British Grand Prix on the 18th of July. Delighted to say with fans as well. Hungary on the first weekend in August, then a summer break before Belgium, before flying off again into a second trouble header with the Netherlands and Italy before a break, before Russia we have a 2BC uh, to be confirmed race on the first weekend in October due to the coronavirus pandemic cancelling the Singapore Grand Prix, we'll see what gets replaced there, then definitely on the 10th of October we have the Japanese Grand Prix the 24th of October is in the USA, Mexico on the 3rd first brazil on the 7th of november australia the 21st and then in december the 5th it's saudi arabia before rounding out the season on the 12th of december in abu dhabi in the drivers championship it's status quo in the front no points scored in baku for max verstappen or lewis hamilton sergio perez closes the gap up in third on 36 points back on 69 lando norris just a couple back on 66 then a little bit of a break before we see another battle developing in the middle field between Charles Leclerc, Valtteri Bottas, Carlos Sainz, Pierre Gasly, Sebastian Vettel and Daniel Ricciardo all closing up on each other. On the second page is a fight between the two Alpines, Fernando Alonso a point ahead of Esteban Ocon, then it's the battle with Lance Stroll and Yuki Tsunoda and both Alfa Romeos only have one point to their name. Still no points for Mick Schumacher, George Russell, Nikita Mazepin or Nicholas Latifi. And in the Constructors' Championship, it's Red Bull leading the way by 26 points to Mercedes. Ferrari and McLaren in an interesting battle for third. The battle for fifth between Alfa Tauri and Aston Martin, throwing as well Alpine. And then Alfa Romeo only on two points. No points scored at all for Haas or Williams yet. We're at the Circuit Paul Ricard in Le Castellet, France. For the French Grand Prix, welcome to your Grand Prix preview. Hello everybody and welcome to the Grand Prix preview for the 2021 French Grand Prix here at Le Castellet in France and well Megan I don't know about you but um, I'm ready to sleep, what about you? I am very much ready to sleep because I only got four hours of sleep last night for God knows reason. Yeah but it seems like this weekend as well the French Grand Prix, the previous two we've had here back at Le Castellet, bit of a bit of a I, I want to say snooze fest. Nothing yeah. has happened. Total of nine overtakes. It certainly wasn't exciting. And we're coming off from a great race at Baku into this one. And there's not really much hope of it being saved. But we've got a lot coming into this race that could save it. Let's yeah. talk about uh, just what happened back at Baku. Uh, we'll start off with the unusual tyre failures that we had. Uh, and that all kicks off as well with Lance Stroll on lap 33, the rear left uh, breaking apart at high speed and him careering into the concrete barrier. Uh, you were commentating with me on that race as well. Frightening accident, dangerous accident as well. Very dangerous. Miracle that he got out okay. And then it was strange also that five laps to go from the end, or even less than that, was it three laps to go? Something like that. Max Verstappen had a failure on the Three, rear left. So it was stopped yeah. at two. Yeah, that's it. Uh, Max Verstappen had a problem at the rear left as well. It exploded, uh, stopped, uh, stopped the race, and it was the rear left tyre again. No warning was given. Now, Pirelli have blamed the teams, saying that they're running them in different ways and not to the letter of the law in terms of, oh, the pressure was wrong, uh, you're, you're the tyre warmers were, were on and off too much as well, you're not really running this by the rules. Uh, but the teams have said, Racing Point, uh, well, uh, Aston Martin it is, uh, and Red Bull have said, no, we run them exactly, it's your fault, Pirelli, something's gone wrong with your... Um, pressures your tire sense and everything else lewis hamilton's come out and defended pirelli red bull and max verstappen have come out and criticized pirelli it's 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 a it's a it's a one-upmanship question is though megan 
They've changed a lot of rules this weekend, uh, especially around the tyres. Pirelli now must mandate the how exactly you, you can store them in the tyre blankets, how long you can leave them out the tyre blankets, exactly what pressures you can put on, and everything. They've clamped down. But what is your personal opinion on the tyres blowing Baku? It definitely wasn't acceptable. It wasn't. I mean... The tyres should have been up to the standards that could handle anything in the race, apart from, obviously, a crash. Yes, You yeah, don't expect yeah. it to handle that. So... It was all caused as well by the long back straightaway. That was that was what was causing the problem. It should have been able to handle that, because if it can't handle that simple corner, yeah, then yeah. how in the world is it meant to handle a, a hairpin, for example, if it was, like... A circuit with full hairpins everywhere. I mean, I think it is kind of Pirelli's fault because they should really keep up to date with things. And we've seen them have bad tyres before last 2013. season. 2013. Yeah, last season, 2013, <laughs> when uh, Silverstone with tyres blowing and the threat of mm. the boycott the next race. Uh, delighted to see that they're not lo looking to boycott this race. However, this is a test track. Uh, the Port Vicard circuit. It's the it's a HTTC, a high test test, a high, oh, was it a high track test circuit, a uh, high tech test circuit. That's it, and it's absolutely abysmal uh, on tires as well. It can it can eat the through them. In response, to that Pirelli have brought the C2, the C3, and the C4 tire compounds here as well. It was the C3 that was the hard last time out. That is the one that blew. Uh, as well so we're going to be monitoring those with a lot of interest uh this weekend it's the medium tire uh coming into this one let's talk then about the decision for a red flag max verstappen got put out of the race uh we said in commentary uh that should have been the end of the race we were past 75 percent distance yeah. the lap should have gone back and verstappen should have won that race michael mazzi saying well there was no need to call the race we could easily restart it so he saw something for a restart and we were sitting in the comments book saying, oh, but now Verstappen's lost the championship lead, he's lost the title. Yeah. If you was Verstappen in that situation, would you have criticised the stewards restarting the race? Oh, yeah, because obviously I would have been, like, furious and I would have wanted to just, like, throw a Pirelli tyre at someone. <laughs> <laughs> he certainly kicked one, didn't he? And then we, then we get the most unusual restart in Formula 1 history, a two-lap sprint mm. with a whole five-light procedure... And one thing that has, I think, gone down in history in Formula 1 is what a crazy two laps it was. Because we get the five lights going out again. We head down towards Turn 1, and Lewis Hamilton has knocked the magic uh, the magic brake panel forward. So he's got no rear brakes. Hits the hit, uh, Takes the lead away from Perez, hits the brake, and just goes straight on at Turn 1 to everybody's shock and certainly amusement in some cases, and certainly for Mark Webber, the massive scream that has rung around Formula 1's panic recently as well. Uh, your point of view on Hamilton's misfortune and accident? I think it must have been, like, face or something, because you don't expect a driver to yeah. make that simple mistake. I mean, he's been a driver for, what, 14 years 14, now? yeah. And has he ever done that before? No. No, for no. as soon as... Pressure. Like the pressure, yeah. That goes out. It's like the pressure's just like got to him. And I don't know why he's so worried about it. It's only the start of the season still. Uh, with that, all that as well, the championship, neither cars scoring any points. No points for Verstappen, no points for Hamilton, which means we've still got that four-point gap going into this race that we had mm -hmm. when we left Spain. And that is something that's sort of exciting the Castellet as well. It, we could have an actual fight. And bringing into that as well, uh, we've got a whole different rule changes as well coming to this weekend. The flexi wings and the bendy, the limbo wings at the back, they've gone. So the only teams that weren't one of them were Mercedes, uh, McLaren and Alpha Tauri. We don't think we're running them, but everybody else apparently was running them. Uh, so Red Bull, we've got the long back straightaway here at France, the Mistral straight. Uh, and that is exactly like the Baku back straightaway. Oh, that's good. Yeah. I know, I'm thinking tyres as well. But how much is this weekend an unknown now that Red Bull have had to change their flexi rear wings? They're not landing most. They've got to be stable. How much is that going to hurt them in the for the season is that is that they're like ferrari in the engine is that them neutered for this year i don't think it is personally because i think kind of they were holding them back a bit and it's especially, yeah. Yeah. especially with france you're gonna need like 
you don't need flexi wings for France. I mean, there's barely arguably, any no. barriers. Uh, arguably, you don't need flexi wings uh, for the back here. The, the, the long back straightaway, yes, maybe, but it's a very tight infield circuit. The first, the first sector, the third sector, very tight, narrow corners. You don't really need it. It's a bit like Monaco. Yeah, they'll be fine. Yeah, they have uh, the pace. Going into, yeah, they've got the pace. Yeah, going then into this weekend as well. Valtteri Bottas. Uh, he's been in the news a lot recently as well after a miserable start to the season. Uh, it must be said as well, and not a great result at all in Baku. Yes, Lewis had a lot had a problem, but the Mercedes was nowhere in Baku. But Hamilton got it up there, was leading the race at one point as well, was in there fighting for podium. Then he made the mistake after the restart. However, Bottas just didn't arrive at all in Baku. He it's was like so he far was down. A ghost. Yeah, he was so far down. It's led to the question is. Are we going to see Bottas either replaced by George Russell mid-season or in 2022, is Bottas gone for the chopping block? I don't think they would replace him mid-season. I can't see it, no. Yeah. I, can't, I can't see them swapping mid-season. But 2022, George Russell, is that a possibility? I think it might be. I mean, I think that if Valtteri doesn't want to get replaced, then he really needs to get his, like, what's that phrase? Uh out kicking your coverage, I don't know. He needs to he needs to get a pull his woolly socks up, doesn't he? He needs to pull, pull his pull his weight. Yeah. Uh, he's going to have to pull his big finished socks up because the news was broken over uh, the last 24 hours that one of the main rivals, actually, for that Mercedes seat, Esteban Ocon, who was at Renault, uh, the Frenchman at Alpine now for 2021 uh, at their home race, uh, he's announced... Uh, that he will be at Alpine until the end of the 2024 season. So another three seasons Jeez. at He's Alpine. He's confident. Yeah, and that is actually great. So we we were saying pre-season testing. I can't see Ocon at, at Alpine next year. They'll put something on else in. But no, he's locked in now. So Ocon locked in Alpine has sort of shuffled everyone around. And we all predicted that it could be Russell and Ocon at Mercedes if Hamilton and Bottas dropped out. So now that Ocon's been locked, it gives us for 2022 the idea that Hamilton is going to stay on. But maybe Bottas is going to be replaced by George Russell. I could see that happening. So if... By any chance, if Hamilton did suddenly decide to leave, who do you think? Oh, what would replace Lewis? Yeah. I think they'd have to keep Valtteri and they'll just have to put George Russell in because yeah. you can't have a complete new team in the world champion. Drivers suddenly if both drivers left. If Valtteri left. It's unlikely, but still. If Valtteri and Lewis left, Russell would definitely go into that seat and. It's a tricky one. I would because um, Verstappen would Verstappen, never leave. No, Verstappen's been locked in at at, at at Red Bull now. It's a tricky one to who would you put in that second seat because there isn't anybody who really can move around. Danny Ricciardo's locked in at, at McLaren. So yeah. is Lando Norris. Um, Sebastian Vettel is locked in for another season. Do you know who I think? Who? Pierre Gasly. Yes, actually, I I would say yeah, Gasly would go nicely at Mercedes if Lewis and Valtteri both left, and because of Ocon's not locked in, I think Gasly would do very nicely at Mercedes. Mm. He's just got that feeling around him. I think when they well, both do eventually leave, but I think it might po- be that podium. Line. Podium last time out as well, Pierre Gasly P three. Mm. That was a great result for him as well. P- it was Perez from Vettel and Gasly, so an unusual underdog podium. Uh, last time out in Baku as well. Perez coming into this weekend as well. Uh, fresh off his second ever victory in Formula One in the space of six months. How much must he love that? Uh, but I think Bottas might struggle this weekend as well because, just hear me out here, Bottas might struggle because now we've got Verstappen and Perez fighting. We got we, So we've got Perez and Verstappen fighting together against Lewis Hamilton. Yeah. Because um, I don't think Bottas is going to turn up this weekend. Because... It's difficult because now we've got a Mercedes fighting two, two Red Bulls, Bulls yeah, in yeah. both championship and for dominance yeah. in the races. And it's I a tricky one. Valtteri needs to get back up there because he's not helping Lewis that much. I mean, where's the covering? No wonder Red Bull are getting through so much. Red, I mean, yeah. Lewis has no cover. He doesn't have anyone to switch with. Red Bull leads the Constructors' Championship as well, and they're again extending their gap over. It's 26 points now to Mercedes coming into this race as well. In fact, if Megan, if you just pop over this way a second, uh, I can show you. There's the Constructors' Championship. Look, Red Bull lead 174 to Mercedes on 148. So that's quite a margin as well. Battle between Ferrari and McLaren looking quite strong. Adding to that Alfa Tauri and Aston Martin. Alpine on their own. 
Uh, Alfa Romeo on two, House and Williams still on nil. But still, as you can see, that is a strong point between uh, Mercedes and Red Bull, a 26-point advantage. Mm. So, yeah, I don't think Bottas is going to turn up. I'd be very surprised. I don't think either. But we've seen we've seen things happen here before. Now, there's the final thing on this weekend before we have a look at the lap attack and show the coverage for this weekend. Um, let's go into the fact that Sunday's race could actually be made a bit more entertaining by the fact there's a 50% chance of rain. I'm hoping it goes up to 99%. Yeah, I'm hoping because a wet Grand Prix here at the Castellet would be absolutely fantastic as well. I can see so many people going off tracks ever since because there's not much yeah. of a curb. And uh, get your blue light glasses out and ready as well and get just turn your brightness down to black and white because the horrible blue and red curbs are here this weekend as oh, well. Oh, I hate those. I was doing the lap attack guide. It's already given me a bit of a headache and we've got to look at a monitor for all weekends. So that's going to be fun. It's like looking at two opposites. Yeah. Uh, let's have a look then around the circuit de Porta card here at the Castellet with lap attack on board with the Red Bull. <laughs> Let's take a look around the Castellet, a 3.630 mile circuit, 15 turns around this track as well, 53 laps ahead of the drivers on Sunday. Get a good exit out of the last corner and then hammer it down the straight at your top speed as you approach the braking zone. For turn 1, 8th gear, 330 kilometers an hour, brake hard for turn 1, down to 4th gear at 165, rise it up for the flat out kink at 2, 5th gear 200, for into the braking zone for turn 3, a 4th gear corner at 165 kilometers, break that down once again as well, 2nd gear, just 95 kilometers an hour, back it back up again as you round turn 5 and 6, hold it in 4th gear at 155 kilometers, turn 7 before the straight at 6th gear, 270, open up the DRS, now flat out into the braking zone of 8 and 9, third gear, 340 kilometers an hour, back down to third gear, 145, that averages back out again, up to 105 at the exit in third gear after braking mid part way through, before you head down after the Mistral Straits towards Capsa at turn 10, flat out to the signs corner now, eighth gear, 320 into the heavy braking zone, slightly for turn 11, and 12 drop down while braking and turning as well not easy down then all the way to fifth gear rising back up for 13 14 and 15 into a seventh gear 290 kilometers an hour back down into third rise it back up into 14 and 15 a tight little infield section that's the same on whatever layout you have then down the trickiest corner of the track second gear 85 kilometers an hour accelerate out of the last corner Boot it hard, and that's a lap of the 3.630 mile circuit of Le Castellet. It's a fantastic track then. And for driving, it's a fantastic track for racing. It doesn't really suit all that well, unfortunately. Yeah. I prefer, it was fun to drive, but they, they should still change the layout a little bit. Okay, Megs, give us a prediction for this weekend. Uh, let's start off with Friday practice. You'll be here for FP2 tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, give us a prediction then. Who do you think is going to be quick in practice tomorrow? Honestly, I think maybe Ferrari might dominate a bit because I noticed they're doing quite well when it comes to free practices nowadays. So they're, they're strong. They are strong. Yeah, okay. So going there on that one. Okay, let's give you the coverage details for this weekend. It's a long one. On Friday at 10.20 for Formula One, we're underway with first practice. The session starts at 10.30. Free practice two, we're on air at 1.50. Saturday, we've got practice three at 10.50. Qualifying, our build-up show gets underway at 1.40. The session starts at 2. And on Sunday, you can watch the Grand Prix live at 1.30. We're live at 5.22 with the French Grand Prix build-up. And then, as well, you can watch the Grand Prix review at 5 o'clock British Summer Time. But that's not all we've got on this weekend. Oh, no, because on Saturday at 6 o'clock British Summer Time, we've got highlights from the first Detroit Grand Prix of IndyCar from last weekend. And then we have the Publa E Prix for Formula E getting underway. We're on air at 9.45, lights out at 10. And then on Sunday, you can join us for MotoGP's German Grand Prix. Myself and Megan commentating on that one. We're on air 11.40. Sorry, we're on air 12.40 with green lights going at 1 p.m. 
And then, of course, for the second Pubella E Prix for Formula E, 9.45 once again. We can watch the IndyCar highlights from Detroit Race 2 at 6 o'clock, just before we get going. We've got a lot of motorsport to bring you uh, this weekend as well. Reminder that next Wednesday we'll also have the Road America highlights from IndyCar as well. But as you can see, everything uh, a lot this weekend to cover. Edward Hunter isn't with us this weekend either for Formula E. So their responsibility of the two races will be divided by Megan and Dad as well. I think Dad's on the Saturday, Megan's on the Sunday. Basically, we're going to be seeing a lot of Megan on Sunday for MotoGP, Formula One and Formula E. But we've been used to seeing her as we're back alongside each other in the box to where usually Megan, uh, I've been at Snetterton last weekend and I'm still peeling for it as well <laughs> over that one. Actually, actually, do you know that was actually really... Simple. Yeah, I didn't expect it to be that simple, but the amount of pressure it was into not getting something wrong when yeah. you've only had like two days to learn something. Yeah. Because obviously I was busy all the other times and I couldn't learn it until like two days before. You did very well. You did very, yeah. very well. Okay, we are on air tomorrow for first practice at 10.20 British Summer Time. Ian Birch will be commentating on FP1 with me. Megan joins me for FP2 as well. Saturday, I think, is being taken completely by Ian Birch. I don't know where you are for qualifying. Um, I think I might be able to go... I the plans are all up in the air yeah. for me for Saturday. I don't know what the hell's going on. Yeah, and on Sunday, we'll all be together as well. Uh, and you'll certainly be seeing a lot of Megan for MotoGP, yeah. Formula E and Formula One as well. I try well. never to miss a MotoGP. Oh, no, oh, no. Right, join us out the weekend then for Formula One, Formula E and MotoGP, but mainly with Formula One. We're on track tomorrow for the first practice session. Dry conditions, but windy out there as well. We'll see what happens. Join us tomorrow, 10.20, British summer time. It was all now it's goodbye